Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Mary Jean and I are just uh, trying to get connected here. And we started a little bit early just to make sure we can get our connection. And I think she's having a, a little trouble at the moment, but I'm sure it'll work eventually. And I mean, she's joining us all the way from Austria, which I think is really cool. So uh, we'll have patience here and just make sure that we can uh, get her joining us and we'll hear her story. It's going to be really great. So hang tight. Pour yourself a latte or something on a Sunday afternoon. And we'll uh, look forward to a great conversation. Hi, Alex. <laughs> For sure, one of the best things about this is seeing so many familiar names joining. <clears throat> It's going well, Bryce. Nice to see you. <laughs> well, I don't see you. You see me. So. Mary Jean, I'm trying to see how I can invite you in. Um, I don't know how I I don't know how to send you a request. So you're all seeing me not knowing how to send a request. I believe you just. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Megan. <laughs> no singing and dancing for me, Megan. Uh, it was a great idea, though. Um, Mary, I think just keep trying. And uh, from what I know, it just takes about five minutes or so, and then uh, suddenly the invite comes through and then I will invite you in to join. So um, I think that's about it. So <clears throat> I'm reading a message here that says Mary Jean uh, must upgrade app in order to join. Hmm. Anyone smarter than me know what that means? Then you can help us uh, get connected. It's also not letting me send you an invite, Mary Jean, so I'm not sure I'm not sure where to go on this. Um, I will tell you guys, if you're listening, that if we do need to sort of sign out and sign back in, we're not going to give up, and we will try this. We might have to get some um, other help with this. I'm not really sure, to be honest. But paving the way has been super exciting. And also, may I say, while I'm waiting and while Mary is still trying um, to connect, uh, that Black History Month, we're in it. And I hope you've seen the posts through uh, Volleyball Manitoba, uh, some unbelievable uh, people in our organization and in Manitoba that have made um, just a huge impact on volleyball in Manitoba. From Catherine Peters, uh, it was so neat to see a feature on her. Janice Kelly, uh, Wanda Gannett, some unbelievable teammates of mine who um, just were unbelievable athletes, but more than that, just crazy great people. 
and um, made made a huge impact uh, heading to the Olympics and all of that. And Mike Stevens as well, um, the last featured uh, in uh, for Black History Month. And there are more. There are more. My buddy Steve Welch, remember him jumping out of the gym, Gordon Bell High School, never forget it, watching him play. So uh, some great highlights there. Now, um, <clears throat> not sure what's happening with Mary. Oh, look at that. I knew if I would just wait and be patient, she would come. Here we go. Let's see if this works. Gola Thompson. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Ta-da! <laughs> it was like, you have to update your Instagram. And I thought, usually Instagram, social media is up to date. So <laughs> really not sure what happened. You know what? Honestly, to be honest, I think it just takes that long. Yeah. That has been yeah. my experience. So. Yeah. But that's okay. It gave me a chance to give a shout out to Black History Month and to our amazing volleyballers that way and, and to have even more people joining us. And that's why this, yeah. I wanted to start this early, Mary, with you so that now we're just past 1230 and we're just past 730 p.m. where you are. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven awesome. hours. So, well, yeah. so nice to see you. I have to say, you and I personally haven't actually had an opportunity to have a conversation, I don't think. so. No, I think we've probably been in the same gym, like, over hundreds of times, <laughs> like, through coaching, through playing, like, everything. And so, yeah, this is a great opportunity to finally meet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In front of everyone else. So that's yeah. really fun. <laughs> Well, Mary, I know you're a setter, and um, and that obviously rings close to my heart, but um, just a great Manitoban, and I'm really excited to hear your story. Paving the way, I think, was sort of a brainchild where, I mean, it first sort of came up for me when I thought, we need to know about more people that are doing more Manitobans that are playing <laughs> beyond, you know, uh, what we know that they're doing, and it started kind of with some young men, right? Michael Clegg and Darian Kosky yeah, joining yeah. us from Gatineau, and now you are all the way out there in Vienna, playing pro with Sokol Volleyball. And uh, first of all, congratulations for, for being a professional volleyball player. I think that's a dream of many young players. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. we should say congratulations. I think just last night you guys won your first playoff game. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Yeah, we won our first uh, quarterfinal match. Yeah, so it's super exciting. Yeah, we had a nice, like, three-set win. Uh, yeah, it was really good. So, yeah. Awesome. Now, Mary, before we get to your story and everything, maybe tell yes. us exactly where you're playing, what division you're in. For a lot of us, I think when we hear Austria, we think, ooh, that's something maybe Mary Thompson is doing. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. would that be realistic for me? Which is one of the motivations, I think, behind this series. We're trying to let young Manitoba volleyball players know that this is a world they can be a part of. So where are you at? And, and explain that for us a bit. For sure. Um, so this year I'm playing with Solko Volley in Vienna, uh, which is awesome. Um, and I'm playing in the first Bundesliga team uh, here. I actually played last year in Austria as well uh, for a different club. And so I just love Austria. So I wanted to come back and play another season. Um, the place I played in my first year, it was a very, very small town. Um, crazy that they had a professional volleyball team there. And then when I got the opportunity to, hey, do you want to come play in Vienna, Austria? And you're like, oh, sure, of course. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, just playing in the first league here. And yeah, it's been really awesome so far. Yeah. And now you're on to the semifinals. Yeah, uh, we play one more quarterfinal uh, match, so it's a best of three series, and then we play a semifinal uh, best of three against, uh, well, I mean, we still have to win our, <laughs> our quarter first, but um, yeah, the top four teams are super competitive, so we've all kind of won and lost some games, so it'll be really interesting to see who uh, finishes out for this year, so hopefully us, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, all the best with that, for sure. Thank and you. And again, before we go sort of back to the beginning uh, uh, for you, uh, which I'm super interested in, um, <laughs> what's, what's just to make it more real to us here who mm -hmm. haven't been across the ocean to play pro, <laughs> uh, what's a day in the life of a professional volleyball player? What does it look like when you get there, you arrive, and you actually get to play pro volleyball? Um, it, was, it was very overwhelming. Like I, you know, you hear so many different stories um, from different players around different countries and just completely different experiences. So as much as you can take all the advice or the maybe the pros and cons that you hear, it's really your own experience. And so far, mine's been really great. So 
typically we have, you know, one to two trainings a day, like for practices um, and lots of downtime. So if, you know, it's, it's, you have to learn to uh, be alone and, you know, do things alone. And um, luckily for me, my teammates are really awesome and supportive. And it's nice that I live in such a beautiful city. So, I mean, my train ride to practice is very beautiful <laughs> and stuff, but <laughs> I can't complain. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it can be mentally and physically exhausting, but also so uh, grateful at the same time, like, just to, you know, especially when I'm on my way to practice, I'm just like, wow, I'm in one of the most beautiful places in the world and I'm mm -hmm. here to play you know a sport that I love so it's a really cool opportunity and definitely an opportunity that everyone has a chance to play um, and with something that I really when I come home will try to push more young athletes definitely while they're in university or in high school and saying you know this is a dream that you can achieve and something that I always wanted to aspire to play professional volleyball and just really grateful that I've had the opportunity to play really two great seasons so yeah <laughs> something i'm really curious about what was it like to go to a different country does everyone where are all the well maybe not all of them but give us an example of where your teammates are from and is your yeah. is your coach speak english <laughs> i know that's sometimes a barrier for some players like yeah. going well what is this drill you just explained yeah. it in German yeah. or something you know what, yeah. what's that like for you uh, so my well i guess my first year i was really fortunate that my coach was actually from the states okay. so every Thing. So I, that was a bonus when I was signing. I was like, okay, sweet. Language barrier is kind of off. Um, actually, most of my teammates, they all say they don't speak good English, but they all speak perfect English. And they don't understand that my German is like nowhere close to their English. So it's, yeah. Um, so the, yeah, the language barrier was really easy my first year. And then this and most of the girls that I played with, in my first year, I actually had two girls from New Zealand, uh, one girl from Denmark, one girl from Australia. So very like English speaking uh, team, essentially. And then this year, um, most of my team is from Austria. And I've got one girl on my team from uh, Slovakia, and then another girl from the States. And my coach is actually from Slovakia. And she speaks like maybe six different languages. Um, and so I actually had to take a uh, A1 German course okay. to get to this year. And so I actually learned a little bit of German. Um, and so when she explains things in German now, um, I'm actually able to somewhat understand. I mean, I kind of look stupid sometimes when I walk into the other corner and she's like, no, Mary, I said, we have to do this. And yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe my German's not that good, but yeah, <laughs> it's, but it's a really cool experience in that sense. So, and they're all really good and patient and translating and everything. So, yeah. <laughs> well, really cool. And I think even, especially as a setter, you know, you're sort of running the show and yet you're with all these different players. What's that dynamic like trying to, you know, I mean, I think I would be nervous uh, going in and all these great hitters, yeah. and right? Yeah. And what was that like for you? Yeah, um, my I it was really tough actually the first actually both seasons because they they call and run different plays so you know I had um, some middles for calling um, like a thirty a C and so I set a C ball like back row and yeah. just and like I think I was playing back row at the time too so it just kind of landed and I'm like okay, no, we need to get on the same page here. And so, yeah, it takes a couple of weeks to kind of work out the kinks that way. Um, and then coming this year as well, I came actually later into the season this year. So the team already had two months of training going on. So when I came, um, I actually had to play the next day. So I arrived and I we had our first league game the next day. And so I actually was setting girls on my team. I didn't know their names. <laughs> And, uh, you know, what we were running. And so I was just saying, hey, you, let's run, you know, this or <laughs> let's do this. And so, yeah, there's been some difficulties that way. But um, for the most part, it's the commu communication has to be strong um, in teams like this because there is language barriers and because you have so many different players coming from different systems. So you have to communicate or else, you know, it, it doesn't work out. But 
so far it's been good. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. it's great to hear that the reality of that, you know, and yeah, there are mistakes made, but you sort of have to yeah. pack up your confidence and keep it all with you and say, you know what, I can play this game. We're going to sure. figure this out, right? Yeah. It's not going to be perfect right away or, yeah. or that kind of thing. Um, and, and talk a little bit about leaving home and being away. Um, I saw David Stasica joining. So I know, like, you know, you're probably missing him a little. You give him a little, like, hello. Just even though you probably... I yeah, did. <laughs> to my mom and dad first because they're they're number one on the list but <laughs> that's cool that's cool and, and I'll give you a chance maybe at the end you can give a little hello and goodbye to you know the people you love the most but yeah um, what's it like being away from home I mean I mean it's pretty exciting where you are and uh, it's not forever obviously uh, yeah. but that's an element for some for some young players they're not quite sure they want to be that far away how do you deal with that yeah for sure uh like I I had the luxury of playing university at my hometown. So I, you know, my real, this was my first big move away from home and it was across the world. Like, you know, so it wasn't just like, oh, mom and dad are, you know, an hour away or, or anything that like a flight away. It's like a full, you know, all the way across. So it's definitely been difficult. And especially with like the time, uh, change and everything and like the time difference uh it makes it you know hard to you know when I'm kind of winding down for the night they're up and going so sometimes it's hard if I'm exhausted from practices to want to have those hour-long phone calls and stuff but um we've made it work and you know thank god to social media and FaceTime and everything is like you really feel like they're there so I can't imagine maybe you know where we didn't have the luxury of just a quick video call and everything, especially for people playing overseas. So it's been hard, but the support is there and I can feel it every single day, even when I'm not talking with them. So I'm just so fortunate with my family that I have back home, so. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and even the people listening and who, have joined, who, are, who are with us today, you know, lots of hearts are coming your way and lots of <laughs> waves and the Lasuk family is just saying hi from us. You're doing awesome yeah. and, and I, all of that and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's so neat. So it's great we can make this connection. So, yeah. um, okay, so Mary, you've given us a really good feel for what it's like out there. And it sounds like, oh, man, to be in Austria sounds amazing. But obviously, when you started, when you started volleyball, you were like all of us here at home, you know, <laughs> just young, loving the, the game, I guess. So, I mean, when you started sport, did, did you play everything? Were you an everything player? Or, or how did sport oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my parents, uh, yeah, dad had me uh, enrolled and mom and dad had me enrolled in everything, soccer, basketball. And I grew up playing basketball actually um, was kind of my primary focus for a really long time, um, just coming from a basketball rooted family. And uh, and then I got into volleyball after watching my dad uh, coaching at Neyland High School um, with his uh, varsity volleyball team and that's kind of when I started to fall in love with it and yeah and just was able I was very fortunate up until grade 12 to play be a multi-sport athlete and I, I really don't think I would be where I am today if I didn't play all those sports so yeah yeah awesome I'm seeing some comments here you were MVP of every position of every sport <laughs> that you ever played a big left side hitter good for you hey um tell those who don't know Mary how tall are you uh five ten Okay, so that's yeah. nice, that's everything I ever wanted as a setter and never got. But <laughs> and um, I support like some of the girls here, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you played varsity and you played a lot of sports. When did you decide? And maybe talk about your transition from high school now into university because that also hits a lot of young athletes and and that's a tough one. The recruiting, the knowing yeah. where to go, and all of that. What was your story in that respect? Um, so right up until grade 12, I was kind of deciding if I wanted to pursue basketball or if I wanted to pursue volleyball. And I kind of had to think about what sport would I miss the most, like if I had to really hang up the shoes and volleyball was always uh, there. And I just saw so many opportunities in that sport for me. So I, for me, I was really fortunate to live in a city where we had a really great uh, volleyball program and really great athletes and coaches, you know, were a part of it, both on the men and women's side. And lucky for me, I was growing up with those coaches were helping me 
from when I was little going in. So I feel like I was kind of bred to be a BU Bobcat. And, uh, you know, my both my parents graduated and played at Brandon University. So um, I feel like I just had Bobcat blood in me anyway. So as much as I wanted to go anywhere else, it was, uh, it was for me. So for me, it was a little bit of an easier choice. And I know it's not like that for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I did have other opportunities to pursue volleyball at a couple different other schools, but BU really spoke to me and it helped because I was always in contact with like Lee Carter, like he was always at our club practices and everything. So I had open communication of what my five years would look like there. So it was really easy for me to transition from, you know, to make that decision to go to Brandon. Um, as for playing wise, it was, yeah, it was really eye opening. Like I found, you know, you are maybe on this pedestal and high, you know, I had, a, we had such a strong high school volleyball team and club volleyball team. And we always did super well at nationals and had amazing coaches with Derek Rochelle's Bryce Wilson. Like I could name off so many greats and I, yeah, it was, it was hard into my first year, you know, to see, you know, all those fifth years and it was kind of a little bit of a real uh, culture shock or, something like that so yeah it, that's kind of how I got into it and it was nice that after into my second year it became more comfortable and that's where I really saw things to become better so I think you make a great point because I think it is the best high school players that get to play in post-secondary so you have all these best players yeah together and and yeah. suddenly you aren't the star of the show right away and yeah. maybe you don't even play right away. In fact, that's a common story. Uh, yeah. Was that your story? Talk a little bit about playing time and how you, you went into the universe, your university life, uh, playing-wise. Yeah, um, so I was really lucky that I grew up watching uh, Becky Birch now and Kelly Baker. Kelly was in her third year when I was in my, or she was in her fourth year when I was in my first. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really awesome that I got to kind of see how, you know, an elite setter runs the show and so it was really nice to kind of be become like a student of the game and I didn't really realize that until my second year like and how fortunate I was to have that year of just really like to get comfortable into my first year position so for me I didn't start my first year and then going into my second year I saw a lot more playing time and I think that was just not necessarily my skill, but it was like building confidence that, you know, I can come in and help my team, um, even though I'm not starting and my role becomes different. And I think once you accept your role and know how, you know, have the mindset, how can I help my team no matter, you know, and I was a setter and sometimes I'd come in and serve for a middle and play defense, you know, it didn't matter what it was. It just had to kind of shift my perspective a little bit. So I know that really helped me transition from that high school to university and then in my third year when it was time for me to be the starting setter I found that I was a lot more comfortable and confident going into that position so yeah well yeah. And, and it's a it's a great attitude to have but a, sometimes a tough one because you can yeah, for I mean, sure university you train super hard like that, that's yeah. a big thing that's a big transition also you're training every day like it's five days a week if not more tournaments on the weekend and and all of that and then you're doing all that and still not getting to play so I think that's a challenge even if you see the benefits yeah. of it right yeah and I was and I know at the end of my first year I kind of had a lot of self-doubt like am am I gonna be good enough to continue on and you know I was really mentally kind of taking myself out of it in all honesty like I really didn't know what my career was ahead of me and um it was actually Luke Reynolds Dave uh was training with Luke Reynolds who's one of the greatest volleyball coaches and you know they invited me and they said come on Mary like come and join our setting uh training and I started training with Luke and Dave and it, and I think I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that moment um and Luke really was like you know you're gonna I want to train you to be the best setter and to make your Canada games team and so he really took me under the wing that year and that's when I really fell in love with being a setter and you know I was always told I was could be a setter because I was was athletic enough and but he made me fall in love with the position you know and more to it so and you know Dave helped me every step of the way as well and so that's kind of when I saw that turning point of okay now I can see 
like my five years in a little bit of a different window. So yeah, it was really cool that way. <laughs> That's really cool. Sort of took you to that next level, not yeah. only in terms of just setting the ball, but inside, right? Yeah. Like, like how I, you loved it. So not yeah. to give away all his secrets, you know, but um, would you have <laughs> sort of a top sort of, I don't know, I don't have to put a number on it, but sort of the top things you took away from that time? Um, I just really liked uh, the connect, like you're connected with everybody on the court. Like you have to have conversations with every single people in every play. And I just really liked seeing the floor that way. Like I like seeing it from all ends and running it from all ends and just creating opportunities for the best, op trying to create the best opportunity for your hitters and for your team to be successful. And I found that the setting position was kind of where I wanted to, you know, where I kind of was maybe meant to be because I remember when I was like 12, my dad will kill me for telling the story, but I would like dive, I would be over in position one and diving to pass the ball in position five and like crying if I didn't get it. And so my dad and everyone's like, you probably should be a better because you have to try to touch every single ball. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I think that really took it away is that it was just like the whole team aspect of, I don't want to say, yeah, maybe running the show, but just being a part of it from all ends so yeah <laughs> that's so cool and I love that I had a coach once tell me that um everyone on the court if you if you don't think about what your face looks like like winning or losing everyone's looking at you every yeah. time the rally ends they look at you yeah. and if you're losing yeah. it right yeah they're all everyone's gonna start losing it so it's a big responsibility and and yeah you, I mean I, I see what you're saying you don't want to say run the show but you kind of do I mean you do Right. Yeah. You, you set the tone in a lot of ways. And so it's cool that you fell in love with it that way, especially with that position, because that's what's carried you f forward. And yeah. uh, do you have a highlight season. Do you have a, a highlight season from your university time? Ooh, um, I would say, uh, oh, my gosh, I would say maybe not like a my I loved my last year, um, Kevin, New Kevin Newfeld and the young group. And that's where I found um, I, I fell in love with like coaching and playing and there was lots of things about ball and at the end of that season that's when I knew that I wanted to try to play overseas like I officially was like oh I, I really want to continue on because I just felt like I wasn't done yet um, I know my second and third year uh, were great seasons my second year we were very successful for most of the season and my third year again was another great yeah I, I had lots of great years <laughs> I got to, good yeah. <laughs> I got to play with some of my my best friends in the entire world that I still like today so I think that's something that and I grew up playing with since I was 12 and we played like right through so I think that was just a cool opportunity so it made every season different but great in its own way so yeah <laughs> what was the most challenging thing about being a student athlete for you um just prioritizing like I uh my time management <laughs> wasn't so great you know and uh it became tough when I especially the year I started starting as well um and even uh, in my first year too because I was so focused on volleyball like I was here to play volleyball and in the sense but I didn't quite understand the whole student athlete thing that you need that to continue to play and so that's where it just became was prioritizing and knowing that if I'm successful in the classroom, I'm going to be even more successful on the court. And so once that started to change and um, I started my program for uh, being in education. So I was doing courses that I, you know, was going towards something that I love to do, you know, afterwards. So that definitely helped. as Well, uh, did you finish your degree in your time at university? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I have my teaching degree uh, from BU. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe after. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take your time. You're going to be working yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool to know, too, though, because not everyone, you know, completes it. Like everyone's in a different stage, I think, when they go yeah. and maybe do the pro thing in terms of yeah. being a, an athlete and a high level athlete. Yeah. Uh, now, the in-betweens, the summers between, <laughs> um, what, what role did volleyball play there? And you, you talked a little bit about Canada Games. You touched on it. So maybe... Let's get outside of your university career and talk about the other volleyball you played maybe in the in-between times. 
For sure. Um, so I started uh, playing provincial team and did my first ever kind of provincial team with Western Elite. And luckily that summer, I actually got to play on the junior national team for the Norseka Championships with uh, Derek Rochelle's was head coaching. It was with the U18 Storm team that won nationals that year. Um, I had actually been training in club with them for most of the year. And then uh, they went off to nationals and I was in my own uh, 16 year national. So I was the other, I was like their backup setter that never went to the games, but I practiced uh, with them most of the time. And then they won uh, nationals and got the opportunity to represent Canada. And Derek, you know, when they won, he called me and said, you know, you're a part of this team too. And we, <laughs> we want you to be a part of it. And so as a 15, 16 year old, that was really exciting to think that I was going to wear, you know, the jersey, the uh, Canadian jersey for the first time so that summer uh, was yeah was a great summer that way and then uh, I think the summer after that was Western Canada summer games uh, so then I had the opportunity to play with that same an amazing coaching staff um, on that end and then I played Canada summer games as well where we got uh, bronze so and we got silver at Western Canada Summer Games. So a lot of successful summers that way and with awesome coaches and assistant coaches and players and yeah, just really great opportunities to kind of push me to where I am. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. have a lot of young, uh, young volleyballers hoping to get a Canada Games experience still in 2022. Uh, maybe, yeah, talk a little bit about being on that Canada Games team. Obviously you remember some of the girls you played with. You can yeah. talk about that and some highlights of that and being from, Brandon being rural how did the training go what did you do to train I mean my experience was I moved into Winnipeg for a lot of those summers and, and did that yeah. kind of training was that a reality for you as well and uh, tell us about your Canada Games experience yeah um so for Canada Games we uh trained a little bit I think a few times we actually trained in Brandon as well so that was awesome oh. so some of the big girls got to come to the big wheat city uh, <laughs> train and um <laughs> Then I lived with uh, just some teammates over the summer. Uh, so we trained majority of the time, like Monday to Friday, kind of like a job um, and traveled back and forth. So um, another girl, <laughs> I can see Derek's uh, <laughs> kind of, yeah, <laughs> I'm sweating thinking about it. Um, but I know Jody Baker uh, played on the team as well. And me and her would travel back and forth. And um, and our assistant coaches, uh, like Becky and Derek, was from Brandon. So that helped a lot that we were able to carpool and go into trainings. But yeah, it was sometimes, you know, the last thing you want to do is drive back, like drive two hours back after training. So we were lucky that, you know, the girls on our team allowed us to stay and stuff. But yeah, it can be difficult if you don't have those connections and being from rural Manitoba for sure. Yeah. But. Now you've experienced a lot of amazing things. Obviously being in Austria has got to be you know, <laughs> a highlight for you, but being in a multi-sport games, like a Canada games, uh, everyone usually says like that was really unique. And, and what was your, what was your take on that? Um, the Canada. Yeah, it was when we, when we actually played Quebec, um, in the round robin uh, and the whole entire gym was, cause it was in Sherbrooke and uh, the whole entire gym was packed. And I think we beat them like it was 25, 10, 25, 15. And we just uh, destroyed them, <laughs> I guess to put, and the whole, and I think there's a photo of us cheering and the entire arena is just like straight face, silent, like no cheering and was just shocked because, um, <laughs> I can reading Derek's comment. I he know. should join in. <laughs> um, and yeah, I remember that was like a really uh, moment I remember from it. And then also winning bronze against a really strong Ontario team. Like a lot of uh, the girls that were playing on that team went on to play with our national team right now and overseas and had successful pro careers. So looking at that strong Ontario team and winning bronze that summer, it was that was another really cool experience and seeing all the different athletes and, you know, being in the athlete, like the, uh, the housing complex and the opening, we had the opening ceremonies and actually it was a really special year because my dad was coaching the women's basketball team and my sister was playing on it and they got bronze that year as well. So we got to come home with bronze medals and yeah, I actually saw my sister 
and my dad, we switched a uh, week. So unfortunately, I didn't get to see her play. <laughs> but uh, me and mom were watching after we had won bronze. So that Canada Games experience is really, uh, yeah, close to my heart, especially because, yeah, my dad and my sister got to experience kind of everything, too. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's really cool. And since we're talking about it, talk about your family a little bit. I mean, this is now come. I mean, you said both. Did both your parents played at, at Brandon? You said yeah. played. Now that. You know, I mean, the percentage of people that get to play post-secondary sport is not that big. Sometimes yeah. when we all get talking about it, we kind of think it's a normal thing. And it really, yeah. really, it isn't. Your family does not sound like the <laughs> average family. So tell me about your family. Um, so my mom and dad played basketball at Brown University. My mom's from Rho, Nova Scotia. And so she got recruited to play. And my dad's from Brandon. And yeah, so they did their five they completed their five years at uh at bu and my dad actually coached at brandon university the women's basketball team for a number of years so i actually took my first uh few steps i think in the bu gym so there's tons like there's pictures of my dad coaching women's basketball i think with like me on his back or my sister on his back and i'm on the bench mom was away uh, coaching a uh, basketball team and stuff and he's coaching university and there's kind of like us back so like I said I think I was born to be a bobcat in that sense but um, and then I have two younger siblings my sister uh, Paige and she played five years at University of Victoria for basketball and then uh, and is an amazing multi-sport athlete she had opportunities to play uh, volleyball and basketball and she chose the basketball route and then my brother, <laughs> Jake, is playing at Douglas College. <laughs> With yeah. my son. Yes. <laughs> Which we only discovered, well, I only discovered that, yeah. like, literally a day ago. Yeah. When you said, well, maybe we should talk about our trips to Douglas College. And, yeah. you know, that's yeah. really, really cool. And, and just how neat. The world is small. This, this, yeah. oh, this sure. athlete's world is small. I would like yeah. to know how in the world your parents, I mean, sometimes when you talk about basketball and volleyball there's like a fight yeah. for athletes you know yeah like obviously they were they I mean they sound wonderful they wouldn't say you can't play the sport you love but no, it's pretty no. incredible you you left the basketball fold and took volleyball you must really love volleyball <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah it was uh and my dad coached me in volleyball and basketball <laughs> but I think we were coach I was playing club basketball and club volleyball and he was coaching both so sometimes I would like forget what you know, I pack my basketball stuff and dad's like, no, like we're going to a club volleyball tournament. I'm like, oh, okay, that basketball's next week. And so just making sure I had the right stuff uh, for practices and everything. But no, they encouraged everything. I remember my grade 12 year, I wanted to stop playing basketball because I wanted to just focus on volleyball. And, you know, they said, kind of, you're going to regret if you don't play your grade 12 year of basketball. And I, and I'm so thankful I did because, um, yeah, it's some, you know, they really, really push for the multi-sport athletes. And I think that's why, or I, I truly believe that's why me and my siblings have been able to be successful in all the sports. My brother is an amazing hockey player as well. And I swear, and he could pick up anything and be great at it. So, um, so I think that's also a tribute to that. So, yeah. Yeah, really being encouraged. And well, from what I hear, Jake didn't play a lot of volleyball before now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, he so would come. Yeah, he would maybe only play a few, you know, he had hockey on the go, basketball and everything. So, you know, time management, it becomes hard. But yeah, so he's, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, that sounds amazing. And I know there was a comment from Bryce that said athlete royalty in Brandon. So I know you're not going to say that, but you let the rest of us say it is fantastic. Yeah. So Mary, back to you. And now um, you're, you're playing pro. And um, I'd like to ask for maybe those who are guiding young athletes and maybe some young athletes that are listening. Um, how do you even get there? So you're in university, uh, you've played some national team, some junior national team and that, and how do you get to the point and, and where did you get help to pick a pro team to even get that process started? I'd love to share that since paving the way is what yeah. we're calling this. What is the way that you did that? Um, so, I actually was able to get help from players that had played before. And I kind of, in my head, did a little bit of research of some leagues that, um, you know, I had lots of friends that played in Austria. And so Austria and like Sweden, um, a few other places that I had in mind, like these are the countries that I, you know, 
these players have gone to have had really good seasons, you know, and, um, and good experiences overall. And I think that's the main thing is that not only do you want to have a good volleyball experience, but you want to have a good life experience. So, and in those countries, that's kind of where I saw. So I reached out to players that had played before and um, they put me in contact with like their coaches because, and now definitely leaving, I understand why players are so close with their coach like every single one of them was like oh yeah I'll, I'll just text my old coach you know and see if they're looking for a setter or you know uh yeah send some highlight video so it's kind of it became not so much like going through an agent which I feel like most people maybe think that you have to go through an agent and get a contract so I was able to kind of go through connections and I think that's where I found two really great teams that way is just through you know players playing in the league so for me it was just essentially reaching out to uh past players who had had experiences and um I did end up also getting an agent through one of the players she was said okay uh he's uh was my agent and he can help you out as well so it was nice to kind of work through a player who had had experience through this agent and this league and so that's kind of how I ended up getting my first contract was through uh, just the help of um yeah through that so that was kind of how I ended up in Austria essentially but yeah, yeah. super good advice though because I think sometimes when we're when we're I don't know playing or we're entering we think we should know things and I think for young yeah. athletes to know you don't you're not supposed to know like no. ask ask questions right and ask all of that so um, and I think that's really good advice. And if you don't know someone who is in that ranks to contact Volleyball Manitoba, right? And, you know, my connection to you for this was through yeah. Adam DeYonker, who's with yeah. Volleyball Manitoba. So I, I yeah. think it's so good. And, and they, th those guys do know who's out there. And yeah. we're hopefully, as we continue yeah. to do this, going to give yeah. more people like now, I'm thinking any sure. young female or male volleyball players, they go, hey, yeah. I'm going to, I saw Mary Thompson on yeah. Pave the Way. I'm going to call yeah. her. I, yeah. Austria looks pretty nice, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. like you say, it's as simple as, hey, I'm going to ask my coach if they are looking for the position that you play. Yeah. And then, and like, you know, there's an opening. For sure. Right? And my, uh, this year, actually, like, I'm in contact probably once a week with my sports director from last year, you know, and easily I could be like, hey, I've got, um, are you looking for a left side? Are you looking for a middle? Um, I've got two wonderful people. And if you have, like, a good connection with them, you know, they're obviously going to be trusting your, you know, who you're sending out. Um, and so that was also what really helped. And um, yeah, in that sense. So it's good just to just make those connections and also not be afraid to just kind of also have a leap of faith. Like I know um, a girl on my team last year, she played pro for 12 years and she played everywhere. Like her resume was super long and she said the biggest thing she and she never went through an agent once she only she just looked up teams on instagram and on facebook and she just sent her highlight video through messages and they go through them and they look so it's also just kind of taking that leap of faith and saying hey i want to play in sweden okay these are maybe some teams that i would be interested in and you know sending it that way and I know that seems a little bit scary and uncertain but um, sometimes it's just kind of taking that leap of faith as well and I know it really worked out for her she had 12 really great experiences so you know you kind of hear everybody's different stories of how they got to where they are and so yeah it's kind of that way as well yeah good to know that's not just one one way or one person to go through yeah. Uh, yeah. Bryce, Bryce has made a great comment. Uh, the most amazing thing about Mary is her determination. And uh, it's not a question from him because he knows your story. Uh, but I have the question. So she has come back after horrific uh, injuries multiple times. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because I don't know those stories and a lot of people wouldn't. So, uh, I mean, because sometimes, you know, in, in listening, it sounds like, you know, pretty nice journey for you. But obviously you had some real obstacles along the way. Uh, yeah, when I was 14 in JV Provincials, um, I ended up tearing my ACL, like very terrible. I tore like my ACL, my MCL, I did everything. And that was going into my, uh, actually, I was in grade nine at the time. So I was going into grade 10. And I remember after JV Provincials, I was supposed to play with get asked to move up with the varsity volleyball team and they won provincial uh, 
the high school provincials that year. And so it was really devastating. And at the time, you know, I didn't really know what an ACL injury was. And, you know, I just thought, oh, it's just a sprain. And my knee was big. And, you know, they're telling me, no, you can't, you know, jump or run or anything for nine months. And so that was all really new to me because I also didn't know any other athletes at the time. I was so young that experienced uh, this injury. And so, yeah, that was really tough from a young age. So my dad, I, yeah, my dad, I think every day drove me to physio, into the gym. We were volleyball, basketball, you know, doing things slowly. So yeah, at a young age, I had to experience uh, an ACL injury. And luckily, my first comeback season, um, I got to set, uh, I got asked to be starting setter for uh, the Crocus varsity team in grade 10. And we ended up winning uh, provincials that year with like Lisa Barkley, um, Megan Robertson, and had like an outstanding kind of comeback season coming back off the ACL injury. So that was kind of something that I remember. And then I actually tore my second ACL in my uh, fourth year of university. Um, and we were hosting nationals that year. So, you know, something that I had dreamed of was to play in a youth sport nationals and we were hosting in Brandon and it was like a, yeah, kind of the, the year for it. And early in the season, I ended up tearing my other ACL. Um, so that was really uh, a tough year and then came back and ended up playing a six year uh, with Kevin Newfeld that year. So that's kind of how it went. And then, and then last year <laughs> being overseas, um, I ended up getting very ill. Um, I ended up getting a, bad bacteria and it actually took me out uh they the doctors really aren't sure how I'm alive still um but I ended up getting sick while traveling and so yeah it was really I wasn't actually sure if I was going to come back and play overseas because I ended up uh having a immune yeah uh ended up getting this reactive arthritis and all this kind of yucky stuff I guess going on and so I was very ill up until June, July, and you know, the Vienna coach was, Hey, are you coming? And I started to feel healthy. And I said, You know, I'm gonna regret this if I don't come. So I said, I'm coming, and so far, so good. It's been good. So, yeah, <laughs> it's been a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> Mary, yeah. I'm so glad that that came up. And thank you, Bryce. Uh, you know what? Uh, for, for some athletes, a torn ACL just ends it. You just kind of go, You know what? It's gonna be too hard to come back. And, mm -hmm. and to have that happen at such a young age, and then again, uh, mm -hmm. What kept you going through that, especially the second one? The first one, I could see you're young. You're, you're like, I can bounce back. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And the second one, with such devastating timing, you're such a positive person. Um, <laughs> that hasn't obviously crept in and made you, you know, uh, it yeah. didn't make you obviously give up. What, what, what made you want to recover again? That's a whole other set of work. Um, I I just had a really great support in university, you know, like I and my family. And I just kind of had this in the back of my mind that I wasn't done yet. And there's always kind of something that, you know, especially even after this year, there's something that's saying like, I'm not done yet. And maybe that makes me crazy after what my body's <laughs> gone through. Maybe my body's like, yes, you are done <laughs> kind of thing. But um, yeah, it was just really great support and you know, determination, like having the people every single, like everyone telling you every single day, like you're going to come back stronger than ever. And, and um, I know like Andrew Coral, who was my setting coach at the time and my, and Lee Carter and my best friends were playing on the team and my parents and Dave and everyone was just kind of saying, you know, like you're going to come back stronger. And so I think that um, really helped me kind of have that mindset of just like envisioning myself having like another comeback season yeah. <laughs> maybe I had one before when I was younger and I just felt like I kind of had some unfinished business to do in the sport and it kind of that year actually took me beyond and I actually really fell in love with coaching and I ended up coaching um, the Manitoba games like the team West Bend for Manitoba games that year and I really wanted to become also just like a student of the game and really learn that year as well so I think not only did I was focused on becoming the player back on the court, but I wanted to become a more knowledgeable player as well. So I think I just love the sport so much that I was just like, I feel like I can grow from this experience and, you know, and that's kind of what I took it as. So <laughs> amazing. Well, you will always have that story and, and there will be so many athletes coming behind you, Mary, that will need to hear your story 
and will need yeah. to hear that not once but twice and then now <laughs> you know being sick last year and now you're back there and oh my goodness oh um, and I coach at BBC as well <laughs> Bryce is gonna kill me if I didn't mention that <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Michelle don't hate her <laughs> we probably against each other as well <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, only respect. And you know what? I, I really hope that, that people are hearing that you took strength from other people, too. You weren't too proud to listen to the encouraging words of others and to say, you know what? I have them all behind me, so they must know yeah. what they're talking about. And even yeah. from the comments here, obviously, your determination, your positivity, and your strength has has shone through because everyone that's commented and, and all the people that know you are, are saying that. And I'm, I'm hearing that in just this short time that I've gotten to know you. So I think that's yes. amazing. So uh, what's the future for you, um, Mary? <laughs> I, I know you're getting married, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, obviously being engaged hasn't stopped you from playing volleyball. So good for you. You're keeping <laughs> doing that. Sorry, Dave. She's busy. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the future for you? How long do you want to play? What, what do you envision? how volleyball is going to fit into your life. And I'm, I'm actually hoping you'll say some more coaching because the future needs you. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think after the season, <laughs> I finally feel like my job is done. <laughs> okay. yeah, and just sitting in this chair, my back is starting to like <laughs> seize up a little bit and my knees are swelling. I don't know. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not good, but um, yeah. Wait till you're 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I'll be in a wheelchair like in a couple years yeah but no it's uh like I said I've, I really want to grow the sport not only in Manitoba but really in the rural Westman area um so I'm hoping that after this season I think yeah I'm gonna try to get a teaching job and I feel like my job is done like I can walk away from the season and be like wow I put everything I could into playing and you know what hap I really hope we can kind of win it all and I can win this championship and I'll just hopefully that's kind of the end of the story but you know either way I'm playing with like amazing players and coaches from like around the world different countries and everything so I think trying to get into coaching and like I said grow it being from Brandon and growing it in the rural area I just think there's so much amazing talent out there I've been coaching with Club West and Steam Densmore and Rhonda Young for um, the last few years and they're awesome and I just really see a lot of talent out there and I want them to kind of get the same experience because I know sometimes it's a little bit daunting uh, to not live in Winnipeg and have that experience and I think people need to know that just because you live in small town Manitoba it doesn't mean you can't you know play professional and you see it through lots of players who have uh, done that in Manitoba in the past. So I just want to just help kind of continue and grow the sport um, in that sense. So <laughs> I love it. I love your heart for rural, obviously, <laughs> obviously yeah. I'm living it and loving it. And, um, and you're right. And, and all working together to make that happen. Incredible. Is there anyone before we're done, Mary, is there anyone, <laughs> and I'll give a shout out to Steve Densport, Woo, big part of my, my yeah. story. And he's, I mean, if you hang out with him more, you're going to just learn how to win more. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> amazing. So is there anyone you want to, a couple of people or whoever you want to give a shout out, um, before you, you know, before we say goodbye to you from Austria? Oh my gosh. Um, well, let me just take out the grocery list. Of mm -hmm. people. Um, no, I guess everyone I can see like tons of names going just know that um, I wouldn't be here <laughs> without any of you guys. And so yeah, it's amazing to have this opportunity to meet you finally as well. So thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, hi, mom and dad. Hi, Dave. Hi, Slip. <laughs> hi, coaches, everybody. <laughs> Miss you all. Yeah, this is, um, I appreciate this because it makes me feel really closer to home. You know, mm -hmm. kind of that final push. This is like a great way to kind of push into home and just know that I'm working towards, you know, finishing playing, but also just continuing on and growing from the sport that it's awesome that it connects us this way. So, yeah. Right thank on. you, everyone. <laughs> Well, we are so proud of you and everyone obviously that's, that knows you that's watching, but those who didn't know you before today, I'm glad that they also tuned in. Um, you, you've done a great job in sharing your story. You've made it feel real and accessible for young Manitoba, not just uh, all of us, yeah. not just big city, but small town across the board. If you really want something and you have a big dream, 
Um, it's not just for one sort of class of players where you can live out your dream. And you're doing it right now through difficulty and, and over challenges you have overcome. And you've shared that with us today. And I think, I know, I know we're inspired. And we want to thank you, Mary Jean Thompson, for being an incredible Manitoban, paving thank the way for the rest of us. We thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you. I really appreciate and having me on here. And just, yeah, I love Manitoba. It makes me miss home even more. So thank you. <laughs> well, we're behind you. We wish you all the best in Austria. And good luck in, this, in the next quarterfinal match. Go yes, get them. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> <Okay>. Bye. <laughs> Now I don't know how to exit out. I think this